Good morning, everybody. Hello, it's Beth Caldwell, and I want to welcome you to Monday Morning Mastermind. For the past couple of weeks, we have been talking about being resilient and being a, an emotionally resilient and strong woman um, because we want to have you strong emotionally as well as physically to be able to handle the challenges that life throws at you. So this week we're gonna change a little bit and we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, what I write about in my new book, Women Lead. Chapter seven is called Curating Calm. And it's about creating a more calm life and a little bit less of a frantic environment for you at work and at home. So I have a question for you. Have you ever suddenly burst into tears or lost your temper or let somebody push your buttons and had an emotional reaction that you normally wouldn't have. Have you ever yelled at somebody in traffic or said something under your breath, just a little bit nasty um, because somebody just irritated you and got on your nerves? And these are things that you would normally not do, okay? Um, for most people, these are extreme emotional reactions and they're not the way we normally behave. The truth is, these kind of emotional outbursts really don't have to happen at all. And in fact, you can, if you tune into yourself, and when you get good at this, you can tune into your family members and you can tune into your coworkers, and you can sort of begin to predict when an emotional outburst is gonna come and stop it before it even happens. Okay, so for me, just yesterday, I had an emotional outburst. I got tears in my eye. I guess it really wasn't an emotional outburst. I got emotional. Um, I got tears in my eyes and I got choked up because I was so upset over the edits in my book. I had made this mistake in my book over and over again with my footnotes where sometimes in the book I had my footnotes inside the period and sometimes I had them outside of the period and it had been edited, it had been proofread, it had been uploaded and then we found this mistake and I was so frustrated and so upset with myself because you should know better where the footnotes go. But you know what, the truth is when you're writing a book, you're not editing when you're writing, you're in that creative mode. And the truth is, is that there's always edits and there's always typos in any big project that's over hundred pages. So I think it came down to like four, um, four different footnotes that had to be moved like from inside the period to outside the period certainly nothing worth crying over and since my graphic designer i've been working with dan for about 10 years and he's never seen or heard me cry we were on the phone and i was getting very weepy about the footnotes and he said hey beth maybe you should take a bath or have a glass of wine <laughs> right this was a sign to me that it was time to stop working and get away from the edits for a while right so if I had kept pushing myself, like maybe I would have done in my first or second book and been like, no, we got to get this done. We got to get this done. We got to get this done. Then maybe I would have come to a point where I yelled at somebody or was really harsh to myself or someone else. Right? So what are, what happens to you when you are pushed up, you know, what we call it when you hit the wall, when you are just pushing yourself too hard and you're depleted and exhausted and overwhelmed. What are the signs that you exhibit? For me, it's usually getting emotional with tears. Sometimes I could get irritable and it keeps on getting worse. So if you pay attention to these little early signs, if you can train yourself to say, okay, maybe I've pushed myself too far. Maybe it's time to walk away from this. This was about 10 p.m. last night. Um, there was no reason that I needed to keep on working on a Sunday night after 10 p.m. And I said, you know what, I have to put this aside. I'm great at writing and communicating, editing, not my strength. And it really exhausts me to do it. So I don't need to be doing it for six hours at a time. Let's do a little bit and come back tomorrow. So sure enough, I walked away from it. Paul and I watched a funny movie. I did take a bath. Um, I did not have a glass of wine, but I did have some chocolate. And uh, this morning I got up and sent those edits to him. He's already sent them back and it's done. It didn't have to be that way. So here's, here's something that I, I have noticed in myself and in other women. You know, we book ourselves solid. We book ourselves to the point of exhaustion. We think that we need to stay busy day in and day out and week in, week out, month in and month out for years and years and years. And I believe that we do this because we believe it's normal. And I wanna tell you it's not normal. We are not created to be working seven days a week, 
10 hours a day, 12 hours a day. So if you find that you're doing that, um, I will have some tips for you over the next few weeks to slow down a little bit. And uh, as I said, this book, chapter in the book is called Curating Calm. Um, but three tips that I wanna give you today. Number one, reduce the demands that you're placing on yourself, okay? When you are expecting yourself to complete a project, let's be reasonable with the expectations of how long it's going to take to complete it. If that you want to start a nonprofit or write a website or write a book, how long do you think it would take someone else to do that? So instead of expecting yourself to do it in, you know, five days or 30 days, what is an actual reasonable amount of time to get that project done? So number one, reduce the demands that you're placing on yourself. When you are doing something new, um, can you cut back on something else? Can someone else do the grocery shopping? Can we bulk pre prepare the meals so we can take, when we have something big happening, let's take some of those other demands off for a short time. Number two, any time in your life, but especially when you're doing something new and big, prioritize your wellness. Make sure that you are sleeping well and eating well and drinking quality water and sleeping quality hours every single night, however many hours works for you. And if you are like me and you travel, um, and like next week I have to speak at a night event, an evening event, and then the next day it's a morning event. So the next day after that, I'm not working because sometimes things do get out of balance and temporarily schedules get upended, right? And so plan ahead and don't expect or demand yourself to be working constantly hours and hours and hours, nights and weekends and mornings and all of that. And so number one, reduce the demands you're placing on yourself. Number two, prioritize your wellness. And number three, ask for help. You know, I know that you enjoy giving people help when people ask, but are you good at receiving help? Are you good at asking for help? So ask for help when you need it, whether it's from a friend or a family member or a counselor, a coach, a coworker, the women in your mastermind group. Ask for help and get really good at accepting help, okay? So we're gonna kind of be talking about curating calm and reducing the demands on ourselves. And I hope this resonates with you. I hope you have a great week. I hope you're a little bit easier on yourself. Be careful on those emotional outbursts if you're like me and recognize those as early signs that it's time to give yourself a break. I'm Beth Caldwell. This is another week of Monday Morning Mastermind tips for you to help you find success in life and business because as women, we don't separate the two. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.